Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a peek outside our weather window. And man, what an overnight. Dropped about four to six inches of snow around the Wenatchee Valley. And then look, the sun came out at times this afternoon. This beautiful shot provided by local tell and our SkyFi tower camera. It's up on Omi Gardens. Looking back, you can just see Rocky Reach Dam there on the left center portion of your screen. And that sunshine throughout, and that allowed us to warm up a little bit today. But as we make our way through the seven-day forecast, after a little bit of snow tonight and overnight, things will quiet down on Thursday and Friday and then warm up as we get into the weekend. But... More storm systems moving in this weekend, which will leave us with about a 50% chance for rain mixed with snow with high temperatures right around 40 degrees. And we'll have much more weather coming up for you a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. A 41-year-old Quincy man will serve 95 months in prison or almost eight years for the death of his passenger in a DUI crash last July. Demand for the coronavirus vaccine and confusion over its availability has led some to some conflict between providers and those seeking it. And Governor Jay Inslee said Tuesday he doesn't, not, doesn't support an effort to move teachers and other school employees up on the priority list for receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. But first we begin tonight. One fruit warehouse worker allegedly attacked another with a knife Monday afternoon while they were outside their workplace. 21-year-old Isaias Gonzalez Guerra faces a possible charge of first-degree assault. The victim said Gonzalez approached him while he was eating lunch at his vehicle and tried to stab him with a steak knife. Wenatchee police said they found the knife in Gonzalez's jacket pocket. He remains held in the Chelan County Regional Justice Center. Meanwhile, a 41-year-old Quincy man will serve 95 months in prison or almost eight years for the death of his passenger in a DUI crash last July. Jesus Sabara Berrigan pleaded guilty Tuesday in Douglas County Court to vehicular homicide and vehicular assault for the death of 36-year-old Juan Pablo Gutierrez Manion. That was on July 18th. Abara crashed his 2001 Nissan Maxima into an oncoming vehicle that was on Highway 28 east of Rock Island, killing Gutierrez and injuring the other driver. Washington State Patrol troopers said Abara was severely drunk at the time. He could have faced a maximum sentence of more than 12 years. Well, demand for the coronavirus vaccine and confusion over its availability has led to some conflict between providers and those seeking it. To be clear, you only qualify for the vaccine right now if you're 65 or older or 50 or older and living in multi-generational housing, and you can only get it by appointment. Rosalinda Kibbe, administrator of Columbia Basin Hospital in Afreda, says misunderstanding has led to hard feelings among some potential patients. We normally see about 70 patients a day through our rural health clinic, so we're really being asked to double our throughput in our clinic, which we did. However, our allotment of vaccine doesn't match that, so we're waiting uh, for more and more vaccine. But in the meantime, we give it out as quickly as possible. But with the governor's announcement last Tuesday of 65 and older and the 50 plus uh, multi-generational households, the onslaught of phone calls was amazing. The response in our area of people wanting the vaccine is, is tremendous. And it did overwhelm our systems. And um, we did have people, and we still did as of Friday, coming to the facility saying, uh, I want my vaccine. I wanna be on, we have a, a wait list of a thousand people right now. And, and they, I want to be on that wait list. I want my vaccine. And so that's challenging. We have very restricted access to our buildings right now. We also have nursing home residents, assisted living residents. We have high risk people here that we care for. And so uh, we've had to work a lot in our community to try to quell the demand per se and, and funnel things to a a hotline that we've set up for specifically for the COVID vaccine wait list that we're managing right now. And so we're so excited that there's such a demand for the vaccine, but we just need more and um, hoping that we can continue to um, support our community as much as possible. 
Governor Jay Inslee said yesterday he doesn't support an effort to move teachers and other school employees up on the priority list for receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. Several state legislators, including 12th District Senator Brad Hawkins, sent a letter to Inslee and the State Department of Health earlier this month asking that school employees receive the vaccine ahead of the state schedule. The letter said the current timeline could mean educators will not be vaccinated until the school year is almost over. Uh, no, we have not uh, given consideration to that. And a couple reasons. Uh, number one, there, there's a mathematical equation here that's very, we, we have to face. It's, it's a reality, it's a very difficult reality. Is that when you, when you give a 25 year old second grade teacher who I love, these are miracle workers. I have a grandson who has the most wonderful teacher I've ever met right now helping him out. She's doing astounding work for him. But the reality is, if you give her that vaccine, her 80-year-old grandmother doesn't get it. And her 65-year-old, or I'm doing the math wrong, uh, uh, mother doesn't get it. So every teacher that is vaccinated today means one less 80, 90, 100, 70, 65-year-old uh, person gets the vaccine. And we don't have enough vaccine for those folks. There's 1.7 million people in that category of over 65 or over 50 in, in congregate or in multi-generational housing, 1.7 million people. And we're only getting about 116,000 doses a week. So if you do other folks, it means one of the older people who might be 100 years of age can't get vaccinated. And I just do not believe that 25 year old teachers think they should get in line ahead of their 80 year old grandparents. I fundamentally don't believe that. Is that there's no zero risk. Anytime you step out of your living room, uh, there's, you know, there's some risk, right? There, there's no zero risk environment. Uh, but this is not to have educators go back in the classroom. We're not asking more than we've asked for our grocery clerks. We've asked our grocery clerks to, to go on site and do their job, and as a result, we have food to eat. We're not asking any more than we ask of bus drivers who've now gone into buses and make sure that we can commute. It's not anything more than we've asked from our child care providers, and they've stepped up to the plate, or to firefighters, or to police officers. So to the extent that communities do make a decision to go back to on-site learning, they're asking educators no more than they have asked for the other parts of our, our community that keep us safe. Coming up next, Transportation Secretary nominee Pete Buttigieg advances to the U.S. Senate today for a full vote with the support of Washington Senator Maria Cantwell. Now in her second term, Public Lands Commissioner Hillary Franz has become Washington's most visible crusader for wildfire preparedness and control. And the public is being asked to weigh in on how to deal with flooding problems in Leavenworth Ski Hill Basin area. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Winter is a great time to trade in your current hot tub. Turn your old hot tub into money with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa's trade-in program. You can save $500 to $1,000 off of any new Artesian Spa or take advantage of a free Bluetooth music experience. Blue Lagoon Pool & Spa recommends draining your hot tub every three months. Ask us about our drain and refill special. Stop on by Blue Lagoon Pool & Spa today. Mary Maids of Wenatchee has been professionally cleaning and sanitizing homes and businesses in North Central Washington since 1998. Mary Maids uses commercial grade cleaners and virucides. Mary Maids has implemented additional safety and sanitation protocols. They are strictly following CDC guidelines for the safety of their clients and employees. For expert help with cleaning and sanitizing your home or business, call or look up Mary Maids of Wenatchee to schedule your free estimate today.
Welcome back. In another news, Transportation Secretary nominee Pete Buttigieg advanced to the U.S. Senate today for a full vote with the support of Washington Senator Maria Cantwell. The senator said in a Commerce Committee session today that she wants more attention paid to transportation workers when it comes to vaccination against COVID-19. Our COVID pandemic continues to impact all sectors of our economy, particularly transportation. I think the chairman knows how much each COVID package, uh, our committee played a major role on those transportation COVID dollars. So I would hope that uh, we would have our transportation secretary very soon so we could work on those transportation issues in the next package. I plan on asking uh, President uh, Biden and hopefully Secretary Buttigieg what they are going to do to help prioritize vaccines to those critical transportation workers who are moving food product. We are now seeing international news, national news, and local news about the challenges we are facing with moving food, and I want to make sure that our transportation infrastructure workers are prioritized to get those vaccines and we can continue to move product through the United States. Now in her second term, Public Lands Commissioner Hillary Franz has become Washington's most visible crusader for wildlife preparedness and control. Her past efforts to get a permanent source of funding for fire programs on public land have stalled in the legislature. This session, she's backing a $125 million package, House Bill 1168, that she hopes will succeed where others have fallen short. She spoke about it Tuesday with NCW Life's Jefferson Robbins. Obviously, catastrophic wildfires have become an annual problem and challenge. And 2020 was, we were no stranger to the realities of wildfire in Washington State. And unfortunately, for years, we've relied on luck and hope. Instead of fully funding a comprehensive wildfire response uh, strategy. And the fact is, hope's not going to prevent wildfires and luck doesn't put them out. The last five out of six years have been truly horrific, um, where 800,000 acres burned last year, a million acres in 2015. Um, and this is about making sure that Evergreen State doesn't turn charcoal black. We know what needs to be done. We know the resources that we need to be investing in. From wildfire response, we need more air resources that can be in the air on initial attack the moment smoke uh, is out, we're up there, get on top of the fires quickly, help keep the communities and the firefighters safe, help prevent the spread of those fires. Having more firefighters on the ground at the local and state level and more equipment. This last year was another example where it is, we go out when fire season starts, we go out to the federal level and ask for air resources. We ask for firefighters. And year after year when we do that, by the time our fire season is upon us, other states are already in trouble, like California and Oregon, and there's no resources to be found. Our state needs to be more reliant on itself for those resources. We also know we have to get at the root of the problem. We are seeing and know that we have a forced health crisis in Washington State. We're in central nation Washington. We have 2.7 million acres of forest that are already dead and dying. It's leading to these catastrophic fires. And so a big part of this work is actually getting at the root of the problem and investing in making our forests more resilient to fire. And the third area is making our communities more resilient. As we saw the tragedy in Malden, how over 80% of the homes completely destroyed. Many of those homeowners were not insured. They fled those homes with just the clothes on their back. The fact is we have over 25 communities at higher risk than Malden. We have some communities who are even higher risk than Paradise, California, and we know the devastation uh, that we witnessed in California. We have the ability to make our homes, our neighborhoods, and our communities more resilient to fire, those two million homes in Washington that are at risk. And that's what this bill would do. This bill sets up a framework for investing in wildfire response, forest restoration, and community resilience. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. 
Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and Air, call Alpine Air. 662-6846. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. The top 10 royalty candidates for the 2021 Washington State Apple Blossom Festival were announced last night at the Numerica Performing Arts Center. 37 young ladies from Eastmont and Wenatchee High School spent two days in front of five out-of-town judges answering questions and delivering speeches. The top 10 young women will now spend the next month preparing for the Cashmere Valley Bank royalty selection pageant coming up on February 27th. The ladies will be vying for $31,000 in scholarship money and the chance to represent the Wenatchee Valley as Apple Blossom Queen or one of two princesses. In tonight's feature story, the top 10 announcement was co-emceed by Wenatchee Central Lions Club members Nicole Brown and Craig Fields. From Eastmont, Olga Murillo. <laughs> And for a complete list of the top 10 candidates and pictures, go to our web website at ncwlife.com. All right, let's turn the page now and talk about some weather. We got a lot to talk about too. First, let's check out our winter weather window as we look and see Rock, uh, Rocky Reach Dam, rather, from our Omi Garden SkyFi Tower camera. And I showed at the top of the news this afternoon, we did see a little bit of sunshine peeking through all of those low hanging clouds. But how about that snow? Boy, it started last night and it snowed almost all night long. Four to six inches, pretty much the uh, measurement for around the Wenatchee Valley. High temperatures today with the sun. It got us a little bit warmer than we thought 34 unofficially 37 is our normal high for this time of year 28 our low this morning 26 is normal record high a beautiful one back in 1962 at 54 degrees record low five below zero in 1969 boy lots of nice moisture out of that wet snow two tenths of an inch and that now gets us to 1.34 inches for the year way above where we should be for this time of year sunrise 732 sunset just before for news time at 456. Let's take a look now what we can expect as we get you into your Thursday and temperature wise just a little bit warmer for most of us mid to upper 30s in the Columbia Basin Wenatchee Valley will be more in the mid 30s even some lower 30s Lake Wenatchee at 31 but the rest of us 36 degrees all the way up into OMAC surface loop now tonight we will see cloudy skies more snow will develop later tonight and go into our overnight we're only expecting about an inch or so leftover snow from that storm system and here it is boy it's a big area of low pressure that will continue to slide to the south as we get into Thursday then so not a bad day for Thursday mostly cloudy skies we are seeing a southwest flow of air move up so it will be a little bit warmer for Thursday we talked about that at about 36 degrees for Friday mostly cloudy not much to talk about Friday either pretty much seasonal temperatures with highs once again in the mid 30s but here here is our next elongated frontal boundary ready to move into the state and that'll happen not so much during the day on Saturday. We just expect cloudy skies, but then by late Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, 
Here we go, a 50% chance for rain mixed with snow, and it will be a mix this time, mainly because we're going to warm up, and Saturday and Sunday's temperatures will reflect that into the upper 30s. For Sunday, a better chance for rain and snow, 60%. Another area of low pressure will slide down, but our temperatures, wow, unbelievably mild on Sunday, at least 40 degrees, maybe a little bit warmer. Monday, can you believe it? Already February 1st, and it's going to start out on the wet side. Cloudy, a 50% percent chance for rain mixed with snow, but the good news, yeah, unseasonably mild for Monday. Tuesday, partly cloudy. It'll be quiet day as we end our seven day forecast. Dry and mild with once again high temperatures for us right around 40 degrees. Let's take a look now at your seven day forecast tonight. 28 degrees, 36 on both Thursday and Friday. A 50% chance of snow then Saturday through Monday, but warmer with high temperatures then in the upper 30s to around 40 degrees. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Doghouse Motorsports just won Best Motorsports Store for the seventh year in a row. Is it the great facility? Is it the fantastic products? Or is it? I'm Bobby. And I'm Tabor. I'm Mike. And I'm Glenn. Hi, I'm Todd. I'm Jeff. And this is the Doghouse Service Team. Hi, I'm Dee. And I'm Dwayne. And I'm Kathy. Come on in and experience the Doghouse. Are you in the Doghouse? And now it's a sports update on the NCW Live Channel. And a happy Wednesday to you. Number one ranked Louisville had another tough test in the ACC last night, but came out on top of Miami 79-76. The final Haley Van Lith got some big time help from her teammates. Elizabeth Dixon came off the bench to score a team high 21 points. Dana Evans chipped in 20. Haley, meanwhile, scored nine points, had five rebounds, four assists, and two steals as the Cardinals improved to 15-0 on the season. 8-0 in the ACC. Also on the Les Schwab women's college basketball scoreboard last night, Washington women ran into a buzzsaw at Oregon State, falling to the Beavers 98-68. The final, Quay Miller led uh, three Huskies in double figures with 20. Washington saw its record drop to 4-7 and seven overall, 1-7 one and seven in Pac-12 play. Coming up tonight, Washington State hosts number 6 Stanford for the first of two games in three days at Frio Court at Beasley Coliseum. The game tips at 6.30 on the Pac-12 Network. Tomorrow, number 18 Gonzaga plays uh, at Pacific, that game at 7 o'clock. The Washington State men are on the road at Colorado tonight to face the Buffaloes at 6 o'clock on ESPNU. Number one, Gonzaga faces San Diego on the road tomorrow night at 6. Then the Zags will travel to Pepperdine Saturday for a 5 o'clock game on ESPN2. Washington State will head back home after tonight's road game to turn around Sunday and travel to Seattle to face the Washington Huskies at 5 o'clock on the Pac-12 Network. We'll take a look at the Les Schwab NHL scoreboard from Tuesday. A very busy day on the ice. Craig Smith won it in overtime for Boston down in Pittsburgh 3-2. The Sabres nipped the Rangers 3-2. James Van Rymsdick scored twice to power the Flyers past the Devils 5-3. Washington remained unbeaten with a 3-2 win over the Islanders. Florida earned a 4-3 shutout win over the Blue Jackets. Roman Yossi, uh, his first goal of the year was the game winner for Nashville as the Predators knocked off Chicago 3-2 in overtime. Andrew Kopp scored twice as the Jets flew by the Oilers 6-4. Carl Grundstrom scored the game winner for L.A. as the Kings beat the Wild 2-1. Jason Dickinson found the back of the net in overtime to lift Dallas over Detroit 2-1. It went to a shootout in Vegas, but the Golden Knights improved to 5-1-1 with a 5-4 win over St. Louis. Toronto was one better than Calgary as the Maple Leafs fanned the Flames 4-3. Uh, make that Brandon Sod scored twice as Colorado avalanche the Sharks 7-3. And John Gibson made 31 saves as the Ducks shut out the Coyotes one to nothing. The only two games on the slate today in the NHL has Chicago skating in Nashville while Vancouver is hosting Ottawa. Well, we uh, showed you the Seahawks' first five of their top ten plays of the 2020 season yesterday. Today, the top five of their top ten plays of this past season. Here they are again. They took Gilmore out for one play. Back in. Wilson goes the other way. Jason McCourty, the official right there, 38 yards for the score. 
So here's Cook back in the game. Faithun. Inside the 30 to the 28 yard line. Delay blitz. Boyer is picked up. Wilson's on the move. Throwing it deep and open. Touchdown, Seahawks! David Moore! Just like that! Don't flip away yet. <laughs> Six different receivers, and this time he lost one, and it's picked off at the goal line. That's Buda Baker. Buda Baker out of the bounds. Can Metcalf track him down? Can he chase him down? And he does to save a touchdown. Watch the play here by D.K. Metcalf. He is flying down the field. Baker thinks he's going to walk into the end zone, and Metcalf just refused to let it go. This, it was unbelievable how much ground he made up. That had to be 10 yards on a very fast Buda Baker, and he just tracked him down. Here they come again. Wilson hanging in the pocket. Wilson going deep downfield, and it's going to be caught by Metcalf. Pete Stancer on the play. Wilson surveys. Fires, and it is going to be caught by D.K. Metcalf for a touchdown. That is an unbelievable drive. It is unbelievable that Russell Wilson this week told us all that he thought D.K. Metcalf was going to be one of the greatest receivers of all time. Thanks to the Seahawks.com for providing the best moments of the 2020 season for Seattle. Fans, of course, hoping for many more memorable moments in 2021. Here's what we have on the week schedule for the NCW Life Channel as far as sports is concerned. Hockey Night tomorrow night takes us back to November 9th of 2019 as the Wenatchee Wild took on the Penticton V's at the Town Toyota Center. Puck drops tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Friday features a Big Nine basketball doubleheader as Wenatchee hosts Moses Lake from January 18th of last year. The girls' games at 7, followed by the boys at 8.30. Then on Saturday, Saturday, another Big Nine basketball doubleheader is in the offering as Wenatchee hosts Davis. Girls go first at 2, followed by the boys at 7 o'clock. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grantstrom on the NCW Life Channel. Grant, back to you. Thank you a bunch, Eric. And now let's check in with Dan Coops for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thanks, Grant. Tomorrow on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, Apple Blossom Festival Administrator Darcy Christofferson will be joining me. As you know by now, we have... The top 10 candidates for the Royal Court, the big uh, pageant, the Cashman Valley Bank pageant on Saturday, February 27th, televised live right here on the NCW Life Channel. We'll talk to Darcy about how exactly they're going to do pageant this year in this COVID virtual world of ours. Darcy will be my guest tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Plus everything you need to get your Thursday going. Live and local, wake up on Nature Valley. We're here for you. We'll see you tomorrow at 7 a.m. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Dan, and that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us. Technology. One man, one show.
We'll bring you the newest innovations that may just change your life. This summer, Ray McNeil and your weekly tech update is your weekly tech update with Ray McNeil.